We've been coming to Benidorm for almost a decade. I absolutely love it here. If you can't have a good time in Benidorm, you can't have a good time anywhere. All life is here. Yeah. There's something about the mix of sunshine, sea breezes and all-inclusive buffet that keeps bringing us back. You don't need money. This holiday's inconclusive. They come to get drunk, eat too much and burn their piggy skin in the Spanish sun. With the 10th anniversary approaching, we're on location as the 10th series is filmed. Um, action. It's also a chance to take a mobility scooter down memory lane for a celebration of the show we know and love and to get the inside story from cast members past and present. Tell me the truth. That was so ridiculous. <laughs> Perhaps learn the odd trade secret? I was putting the ice inside me bra and trying to cool down and then got frostbite on the nipples. <laughs> <laughs> and see some of their work from behind the scenes. It's been a decade that's brought a beach bag full of bizarre sights, some of which will never leave us, no matter how hard we try. <laughs> So pack your bags, we're going on holiday. A short hop from Alicante Airport sits Benidorm. It used to be a quiet little fishing village, and whilst they might still catch fish here, quiet, little or a village it is not. The fictional version started with one man, seen here nipping through town in Benidorm's vehicle of choice. You may have glimpsed some of his cameo performances over the years. Park up, Elvis. This could take some time. Uh -huh. There was Elvis the driver, over-friendly tourist at airport. Excuse me, you don't want to share a cabin to Benny, do you? Benny? Benny Dorm. In fact, here he is again, this time in the title sequence. His real name is Darren Lytton, and he's the show's creator and writer. Ten years on, he's going to give us a little tour of Benidorm and show us some of the locations they use for the show. And where else could any day in Benidorm start but by the pool? And Sol Pelicanus Hotel has a pool that you might just recognise. So this bit is private, you can't come this way. Oh, go on, go on, then. you can just, just you. So here we have the famous Solana pool bar. When we first came here to try and find where we were gonna film the series before we even started shooting, we walked around this corner and I just went, that's it, that, that's exactly it. Even the sort of, you know, the coconut matting sort of roof of the bar, and the swim up part here, where we've had lots and lots of scenes. Oh, la. Just all of it, it was already in my mind's eye. And I just imagined uh, who was here. And they're still here, 10 years on. In 2007, series one of Benidorm began. Six 30 minute episodes that saw the very first holiday makers arrive at the Solana Resort, ready to make new friends. Oh my god, just look at the people. It's boiling. Lovely, that bit of sun. Mama, I'm hungry. We're going to get something to eat now. Capital of Ethiopia. Addis Ababa. And soon we came to know them all well. Characters like middle aged swingers. Donald and Jacqueline. My character is um, Jacqueline. Um, what's her surname? <laughs> Stuart. Stuart. Jacqueline How long Stuart. did Evelyn is about? Ten years. Ten years. Jacqueline was happily married to Donald, and um, they were very open-minded. Um, they like swinging. Here we are, Alan Titmarch. Oh, he's lovely, isn't he? I'd let him dig my garden any day. Ice cream tastes so much nicer when the sun's shining, don't it? Yeah, definitely. There was Jeff, the pub quiz champion, with his happily bemused mother, Noreen. I wonder how they do that. Well, I, I think she's permanently bewildered <laughs> um, by most things, isn't she? And the Garveys, Mick and Janice, their children Michael and Tell, and Janice's mother, queen of honest feedback, Madge. Take that coat off. Nobody here cares how fat you are. Mother-in-law yeah. from hell. Yeah. yeah. The mother-in-law who knows what's right for her daughter. 
We it's were a, a, a typical family, weren't yeah. we? Stereotypical yeah. family, but we, a we bit had... different. <laughs> He just wants to go on holiday and have a simple, nice time with his bum on a towel, a beer in his hand, and Janice in the other hand. <laughs> and he wants to have a really fun holiday, and it never seemed to work out that way. What have I said now? What have you said? You're nothing but an animal. Why, I ever let an insensitive pig like you marry my daughter, I'll never know. I actually auditioned to play the part of Mick Garvey. Did you know that? No. No, I auditioned to play Mick Garvey. Which I didn't get, obviously, rightly went to Steve Pemberton. He needed the work. He does. He always does. We hadn't actually met each other as a family until we went to Benidorm, met Sheila, met Ollie and mm. Hannah, and the five of us, within about an hour, we were crying with laughter. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and uh, we just knew we had a, a really good sort of family bond. Mm. And from that point, it was the most joyous job. At only seven years old, the youngest member of the cast was Ollie Stokes, who played Michael Garvey. My grandparents and my mum used to come out there with me and then I, I had to have a tutor, obviously, to do my schoolwork and stuff. But it was good, it was good. The Garveys quickly got down to doing what they did best, sunbathing and arguing. The constant embarrassment of a bony, venom-spitting carcass who has no consideration for anyone but herself. Who are you talking about? You! I'm talking about you! Who did you think? Well, I knew it wasn't our Janice. She's never been what you could call bony. Look, there you go again! All right, that's enough. Honest to God, you're like kids. Is there any chance at all we could just sit here and have one peaceful morning? The Garveys go from first to fifth gear like that. There's no, mm. there's no moving through the gears. They just go. And chief fire starter was Madge. Oh, and it always boils down to what you want to do, doesn't it? She's so critical of everything, and she can just cause an argument in a telephone box. So. Oh. Yeah, come on. Make, he doesn't make her feel welcome. Hey, I've already lost the first two days of me holiday because of you. Just watch it. What's the difference? You're never around when people need you anyway. Tell her, tell her, Janice, because I am going to lose it big time. Shut up, the pair of you. But as long as the sun was out and her lighter was working, Madge was happy. To sit in the sun is glorious and it's wonderful and drinks are free and that's wonderful and I can smoke as much as I like. But what about the character, Sheila? <laughs> <laughs> what about Madge? All from the comfort of her Benidorm chariot. I couldn't drive the thing straight and I was bashing into doors, bashing into furniture, breaking everything apart, and so I had to have lessons. I won't be spending it in an empty Spanish bar on my own, crying into my gin and tonic, like you. One of the crew said to me, Sheila, do you drive a car? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, of course I do. He said, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> the Solana Resort might not have been to everyone's taste. The rum is disgusting. The food is atrocious. The people are revolting. I don't know how many stars on TripAdvisor it would get. Our manager, S. Janey, often struggled to manage. Why is this bar not open? Because useless sod who works here hasn't turned up, and if you see the dirty, greasy head get out on the town, you can tell him he's sacked. I think she says she can't get the staff, but I think she's got, like, a little soft spot for Matteo. But Matteo's soft spot was usually reserved for the holidaymakers. I'm going to miss you so much, Matteo. Hey, come on. No deal. <laughs> They're here one week, you give them everything they want for a week, you probably sleep with them on the last night and then you squeeze a few tears out. And as they walk away, you go, next. Hola. Benidorm was beamed into our nation's living rooms. For those who'd been there, it was like welcoming an old friend. And for those who hadn't, it was a window on a whole new holiday experience. Once you've been there a couple of days, you don't, you don't do the double take anymore. You go, nope, there are three... Wonder women walking past me, and that's... And they're all men. And they're... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We've seen the hotel where they film the pool scenes. It's time to hit the beach, where, in a curious twist of fate, they shoot the beach scenes. And here we are at the beach. And here we have the cable ski. We did have Janine being unceremoniously pulled off, if I can use that expression, uh, by a speedboat, and... Um, it looked very, very dangerous, of course it wasn't, but it is um, one of those moments where 
I write a scene and I say, oh, that'll be hilarious, and then think, how's, how's that going to actually work? OK. Go! <laughs> The beach has been the location for some iconic moments over the years, never more so than the finale to Series 2, where Madge was on the verge of saying I do to Mel, a successful businessman who'd melted her stony heart. Mel and Madge got married here on the beach. I remember being on one of the bars and um, I was sitting um, writing the last episode. We'd got here, we'd started filming, but I hadn't finished the last episode. That's happened quite a few times over the years. And um, there was a paraglider and it just went along as I was sort of envisaging the scene. So I just wrote it in. We are at the point of actually making the vows. To love and to cherish till death do you part. And suddenly, from the sky, appears, as if by magic, Johnny Vegas. Ah. Uh. And he lands on top of my husband and knocks him out. Who are you? That's the vicar, Mel. You've had a bump on the head. Who are you? Uh. Mel, Mel, don't panic, it'll all come back to you. You remember Madge, don't you? <gasps> we realise he's lost his memory. Mick thinks uh, if he's had one bang on the head to lose his memory, then another bang might help him get his memory get back. It back. It's yeah. perfect logic. Perfectly logical. Come and sit down for a minute. Oh, 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 oh. <sighs> what do you think you're playing at? I was trying to get his memory back. Yeah. Sort of dash yeah. thing my son-in-law would do, of mm. course. <laughs> Lock him up and throw away the bloody key. What are you doing? I was trying to help him. We're the only family he's got. I'm being taken away in handcuffs, and mm. then it ends with this brilliant shot of uh, of Madge running after the running after the, <laughs> the ambulance in a wedding dress. Oh, I do love a good wedding. Welcome back to Sunny Benidorm, where our leisurely journey by mobility scooter through ten years of the show has reached Series 3. By this point, the episodes had expanded to become 60 minutes long, and amongst returning cast members, there were two notable new ones. There was Brandy, played by Sheridan Smith. I've got a lot of family who've been to Benidorm. I've heard some of the people can be as rough as a dog's ass. <laughs> you don't say. But Series 3 also brought a potential love interest for the eternally single Jeff Maltby, who came upon a chat room one day and began to correspond with the seemingly female and seemingly lovely Leslie. Well, I met Darren and said, I was, oh, I love the show. I said, it's great, you know. And he said, well, would you like to do one? Well, by this time, I had a few beers. And I said, I'd love to. And he said, well, what would you like to play? And I said, well, you know, something people would never expect. It was my first uh, scene, so nobody knew who this character was going to be. And Johnny actually said that he didn't want to see me in the gear. Because <laughs> <laughs> he'd been warned. Um, he didn't want to see me, though. We actually turned over. Come on, Jeff. Don't mess this one up. You never know, she could be the one. Hello. You must be Jeff. I returned only, look at me, one. <laughs> I'm Leslie. Sorry, it's the first time I've seen him in the wake, I'm sorry. Uh. <laughs> it just collapsed. It just absolutely <laughs> no, I ordered. collapsed and then we had to do it again. Hello. You must be Jeff. I'm Leslie. The way he 
cleared it though. I mean, he, he's terrified. Yeah. I'm absolutely terrified. Now then, uh, before we go any further, something I want to tell you, Jeff. Okay. We chatted online a lot yesterday, and well, there was one thing I wasn't completely truthful about. Really? Yeah. I want to get it out of the way now. I mean, we don't want an elephant in the room, so to speak. No, we don't want that. No. But I've got a sneaking suspicion you know what I'm going to say. Might have crossed my mind. Jeff. I'm not 35. Really? No. I wasn't 100% honest with you on that score. Just to the north of the beach and the Solana Resort pool location sits the building where they film the reception scenes. A rather unlovely lump of a thing, known affectionately to all as the Pink House. We use this as our production office. The front bit, as you go in the sort of reception area, is um, enormous. And then somebody had the bright idea, why don't we build the set of the reception inside the Solana uh, here? Here's where the here's where the tragic happens. No, here's where the magic happens. A camera. Stop me if I get too technical. A big balloon thing with light in it. We could take the lift, of course, but we wouldn't actually go anywhere because they're just... Uh, they're just boxes. Oh, how, where, did, where have you come from? Magic cupboard. But there's nothing in there. What were you doing? Who else is in there? Don't lock me in here. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I never knew that. You can't see in here. This goes through to the edit. This is like Willy Wonka's whatever. Look! How often do they let you out? Never. 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 Good. Um, actually... Today's scene, available to view in the forthcoming series 10 of Benidorm, is where two mysterious guests arrive. Two guests who look a lot like Hale and Pace. Why did you see me just in disguise? Oh, we've got through there is Joyce Temple Savage's office, and my goodness, as we look in, there is Hello. Joyce Temple Savage. Hello. Hello. I'm just having a little coffee before I get back to work. Sorry to interrupt you again. Joyce Temple Savage here, your Solana manageress. The formidable Joyce Temple Savage became the Solana's manageress in Series 5. You! Get in this line! She actually thinks she's rather wonderful. When she first got here, nobody knew who she was, and she got here and surprised them all. You, my friend, are standing on very thin ice. She immediately is attracted to Matteo, of course. She's she... so got the hots. Oh, she for has. Her. She In has. First, her. Was it you or was it the character that had the hots for me? Oh, don't be so ridiculous. Don't touch what you can't afford, love. A transvestite waiter, a moronic caretaker, and a hotel worker in Benidorm, who doesn't speak a word of English. Well, I've heard the lot now. Oh, I well, I suppose it's a bit like uh, being the manageress of a holiday resort in Spain. Who doesn't speak Spanish? Watch it, you. I'm in charge. Well, she's a bit Basil faulty, I think. <laughs> she is a bit, she... <laughs> yeah, it's Mrs Temple Savage to her face, but when she's not there, it's Temple Savage, isn't it? You know, yeah. By this time, Les, a.k.a. Leslie, was working at the Solana with his son, Liam. He's a... Sweet, somewhat stupid <laughs> sort of a chap. <laughs> but he's got a heart of gold. And Leslie was cutting quite a dash around the resort with rollerblades and a new cocktail menu. One large honky tonk and one regular witch's tit. Lovely. Thank you, Leslie. How are the new cocktails going down? Oh, choppy man. It's a man really in the wrong clothes, I, su I suppose, but he doesn't see it as that. <laughs> uh, is he gay? Is he not gay? Well, I'm not sure. I think he probably helps them out when they're busy. <laughs> <laughs> I've nicked it, like you do. You nick everything, don't you? So I've nicked the laugh from Tommy Cooper. Eh? <laughs> Dick Emery, you know, he, he couldn't walk in these so I've got to walk from him. There's a lot of, lot of Les Dawson in him. I mean, I used to struggle with my weight. Used to. But for some reason, when I hit 40 last year, <laughs> the weight just fell off. And ever since then, I've been lucky enough to maintain my schoolgirl figure. So I've just nicked the ball, hopefully. Mm, definitely. And had a bit of fun with it. 
The Solana has always been an all-inclusive resort. It's an opportunity grasped with both hands by many guests. All-inclusive! But a regular character by this stage was Noreen's daughter Pauline, a lady who liked a drink or two, or 12. It's like, how many episodes in has she got? Oh, there she goes, off the wagon. <laughs> Falls with a great bump. I, I can't read that. Played by Selena Griffiths, Pauline's on-screen inebriation is made all the more impressive by Selena's little secret. I'm completely teetotal and always have been. You just observe, and I've had a lifetime of having people get absolutely bladdered. By this point, the Solana had its very own hairdressing salon called Blow and Go, run by the larger-than-life Kenneth Dubeck, a man careful never to let work get in the way of a good time. When is your next appointment? Oh, will you go away? Look, believe me, love, with split-ins like that, it's not an hairdresser you need, it's a crash helmet. What makes Kenneth tick? Food, mainly kebabs, good nights out, late nights, one night stands, waking up in skips. He's got great stamina, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I think partly it's because the alcohol never leaves his system fully. I mean, it's just constantly flowing around. Before long, tension began to grow between the ambitious Joyce Temple Savage and the maverick that was Kenneth Dubeck. We've had the most fabulous bit of news. <gasps> You're being transferred to Falaraki. I am just... By the end of series five, the situation escalated dramatically. It was one of the best scenes ever to film. I mean, it's reminiscent of Alexis and Crystal having a scrap in the pond in Dynasty. They don't like each other, and uh, they're, they're really up for a, a fight any given moment. This time, I just wasn't having it, so I confronted it. I mean, it started off with a little tete-a-tete, -tete, which kind of grew into a pillow fight, which kind of grew into me pouring sangria overhead. I do not wish to have a full-on cat fight in the middle of reception. Don't you? Well, I bloody well do. I remember Tony kept saying, well, you're actually doing it for real, Sherry. You're actually thumping me in the face. And I went, really sorry, but I don't know how to pull it. So the, the stunt coordinator there said, right, come on, I'll show you how to pull it. So it's like that, you know, and you don't touch somebody. He kept going, no, you're actually hitting him now. <laughs> you're actually hitting him now. So aggressive. I know, but I couldn't so help it. because I really wanted to smack him, you know, because I thought <laughs> it would look so much better if I smacked him. <laughs> As the fight moved to the pool, there was a brief attempt to drown each other. Oh, Kenneth, he has, how do you say, lost his plot. He's lost his bloody mind. He's definitely lost his job. Before Joyce set about Kenneth like a crazy lady. Oh, my God! Let's eat! You've broken my front teeth! No! Right there is where she punched me in the face and knocked my teeth out. And pe people always say to me, how did they do that? How did they knock your teeth out? Little secret, just before we filmed that scene, I'd had a fight with a patio door at my mum's house. I ran straight into it, <clears throat> smashed my tooth. So by the time I come out to film, I was halfway through having implant surgery to have these two teeth replaced. So Darren phoned me and said, can we use that? Would you mind if I wrote it into the show? And I said, well, we'll never be able to do it again. Once the implants are in, they're in. I said, absolutely, let's do it. What you see is me spitting out of my mouth is half of chewing gum. It's a little piece of white mint chewing gum that, I mean, very cleverly edited. I mean, it's brilliant. But it's vicious. I mean, she gives me such a smack in the mouth. If you want to rematch, just whistle. If you can. I just look like me. Where are they? In series six, the transfer coach dropped off some more new characters. There were the Dykes, Clive and Tonya, and their children, Bianca and Tiger, whose best friend was Joey, a young man with a distinctly flimsy grasp of what was going on. This is the best holiday abroad I've ever had. When did you last go abroad? I've never been abroad. Joey is super zen, like he means well, but he was dropped on his head as a child, do you know what I mean? So. He's a bit damaged. Somebody told me that even though it's all inclusive here, you are allowed to leave. Really? 
Oh, well, they kept that one quiet. I know. They should have a sign. In Series 8, the Dawsons arrived, and the volume around the pool went up by a couple of notches. You can't spend the rest of our holiday ignoring my own father. He may as well not have come. Well, at last we agree on something. Oh, give up. Where are you going? What have I done? Well, there's a lot of tension when they're on holiday. It's a little bit like Christmas, isn't it? Yeah. And, like, you're all... Yeah. relatives are thrown together. I'm a very, very placid person because I get all my rage out. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. She can do that thing with a knife when you go between your fingers. <laughs> And stoking the fires of discord for Billy and Sharon Dawson was almost always Billy's dad, Eddie. If you say sick one more time... Oh, forget it. I don't do it on purpose. It just happens. It seems that whatever I do, Sharon disagrees with it. She thinks I'm an horrible old son. <laughs> and the family was complete when Sharon's mum, Loretta, arrived, a grandma from hell, stretching the definition of the word cougar to the max. She's a woman who enjoys herself, and she enjoyed herself that night, as I, I remember. Did. It was maybe a little bit unfortunate that it turned out to be with one of her grandson's best friends and that she did come across her grandson along the way. She's my grandmother! No! Oh. The simmering tension between Sharon and her father-in-law could explode at any time. For example, there was the day when he took on the role of his granddaughter Jodie's swimming coach. Can you swim? No, not really. No, there's only one way to learn. The yeah, drowning. the partial drowning. Yeah. Yeah. The, the attempted murder. He was just yeah. trying to teach her how to swim. <laughs> well, he said, I might have just nudged her. <laughs> oh, my God! Jodie! Kicked you. Are you all right, darling? Of course she's not all right. She's nearly drowned. Granddad, Granddad kicked her into the pool. What? Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> you didn't kick her in, did you, Dad? Well, I, I might have just nudged her. What? Come here! Oh, no, 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 come here! No. Let me at him! Look, get off me! It's another day of filming for Series 10 of the show Benidorm. Another day by the Sol Pelicanus Hotel pool that doubles up as the Solanas. It's early in the morning, and since Darren is a writer, he's obviously still asleep. This to the right here is the sort of production area. So Steve Edge, who plays Billy Dawson in the show, gives us a tour behind the scenes up on the first floor of the hotel. This is the breakfast. So there was boiled eggs in there. They've all gone there. There's the cheese. There's sometimes a plate with a wedge of lemon on. So it's a suggestion that there was smoked salmon at one point, but I've never seen it, and I get here at 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, an apple. Uh, and here we have what it says on the door, makeup. Oh, I look like a clown. We do that, does not so, Do you need much makeup um, yourself? Um, yeah, yes. I'm actually a 14 year old black child. <laughs> so I need a lot of makeup to look like a 44 year old white man from the West Midlands. This is the production office, the AD's production office, where all the assistant directors are basically sort of malingerers. There's Phil there, he wears his hair in a top bun. Uh, <laughs> this is where a lot of schedules were on the wall there, all carefully highlighted. He doesn't understand it, he just colours them in like a child. This is all the principal costume rails, so we've got all your favourite characters, Matteo, Leslie, Kenneth... Oh, of course, Billy. <laughs> so we've got Kenneth's hot pants, quite an array. Um, and then all his T-shirts. T-shirts from bygone days. Six pack coming. Up yours or mine, I remember was the very first one. I mean, there's, there's, there's quite a few that have been 
taken to the lawyers. They have to be passed by lawyers, and some of them haven't made it through to the screen. Shall I tell you one of the ones that didn't make it through to the lawyers? Don't whisper and listen. <laughs> if you think my attitude stinks, you should smell me. <laughs> Actors always tell you that even though their job looks rather easy, they're actually working really, really hard. It's not something you hear too often on Benidorm. They're forever spraying sun, suntan cream on you, but I've been here two months, I'm as brown as a coward's trousers. Our favourite days were if we had no dialogue. I shouldn't say that really, should I? But <laughs> <laughs> and we could just lie on the sunbeds in the back of shot. Steve would try and read a book. Gladys always had in her handbag <laughs> yeah. a rude Mills and Boone. Yeah. After hours, they were called. After hours, yeah. And they yeah. are quite racy. They constantly have our nose to the grindstone here. People think we have fun, but we never do karaoke. We never get drunk. We never go to the beach. It's a nightmare. Yo, I'll be back in five minutes. Wherever filming takes place for Benidorm, there will always be fans. And the pool is the best place to get some snaps and hopefully meet some of the stars. You don't go to Paris without seeing the Eiffel Tower. You don't come to Benidorm without seeing yeah, Sherry tail. Houston. They're your bread and butter, really. If they weren't there, we wouldn't have a show, would we? And I think you've got to sort of give them a lot of respect. And, and, and the other thing you've got to remember is, is that they're on holiday, you know. And look who I met. Mm. You know, so they want a photograph, you know. And, you know, so we, we always give, give them time for that, you know. They do call you by your character names, and obviously a lot of them know, a lot of them say Billy, but a lot of them just say Dad. And, and, <laughs> and, when, and when, when there's a kid swimming in the pool going, Dad? You go, I don't, I've never been here before, that you are not my son. <laughs> I get all the groping, I get hands down my back, down the front, Found... down the side. I get licked, kissed on, on, a, <laughs> on a daily basis. If I'm sitting there, my mother is visiting, and this stranger just comes up and goes... <laughs> That's usually me, though. <laughs> we'd, we'd all just arrived to start filming um, Series 9, and we all went for a, a drink up in the Old Town. And there was probably 10 of the cast there, out with the crew. And then all of a sudden, around the corner, came 10 versions of us. It was a stag and hen party, all dressed as us. So we had this brilliant photograph taken of us next to ourselves, if you like. <laughs> it was really, really funny. We, we see a lot of that. We see a lot of people dressed as us. Just a few hundred yards away is the location where they film all the scenes for Neptune's bar. In reality, it's called the Morgan Tavern. And it's another famous stop on the Benidorm fan tour. Ooh. <laughs> Hello. How are you doing? You're right. Yeah. Very. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. We followed you all over to the NTAs and all over. Did there. you? Yeah. Oh, thank you. That's so, so kind of you. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, we're always crazy, you know, crazy. And how often do you come to Benidorm on holiday? Three times a year. At least. Really? Yeah. My grandson and me. Are Four-year-old, he's told all his teachers <laughs> told about, them about uh, Benidorm, well done, well done. about Gay Ken and everything. About Gay Ken? <laughs> yeah, he's told, the whole, he's told them the whole lot. Oh. I've got all the tapes. You've got all the tapes? My friends. Oh, bless you. Oh, all the DVDs. Oh, oh, thank you. Keep on doing it. Keep we'll doing try. It. Very nice to meet you. Very nice Keep to meet you. Keep watching the show, won't you? you again, well, that was my agent and um, his mother. Since it's open as the Morgan Tavern in the evening, all the filming as the Solana's Neptune's Bar has to happen during the day. And over the years, it's witnessed some memorable entertainment, much of it produced by the guests themselves. It was my greatest fear when I landed on my first day, and they were like, we're going to do karaoke. I was like, no, I ain't. I am not doing karaoke. I don't think so. I'm nervous as hell. That was the most nerve-wracking day of my entire life. I've got this mankini. My mum saw that. Often, there was no way of knowing what sort of singing voice to expect. And 
there have been some famous guest acts too. Banana Rama went down well on 80s tribute night with the help of Jacqueline. And Madness rocked Neptune's on the Series 9 finale. Mother's tired, she needs a rest, the kids are playing up downstairs. But perhaps the most memorable performance came from Noreen. Ladies and gentlemen, there have been many times in my life when I've been proud of my only son. Yeah. Mistakenly under the impression that her son Jeff was not only secretly gay, but was planning to come out that very evening. Are you ready to come out, son? I say, son, are you ready to come out? Yes, I'm ready! God's sake, woman. She accepted that that's, if that's what he was, and Matteo said he was, and he said he's coming out tonight. It was all a terrible mistake. He is a wonderful, happy, proud, gay man. You what? And to honour her son, she dedicated her song to him. Young man, there's a place you can go. I said, young man, when you're short on your door, you can stay there. I'm sure you will find many ways to have a good time. It's fun to stay at the YMCA. It's fun to stay at the YMCA. In ten years of Benidorm, many locations have been used in one way or another. The Benidorm Palace has featured several times. Benidorm Circus, too. And there's been many a visit to Benidorm Old Town. Who can forget Matteo in drag being arrested for solicitation? Matteo! Natalie, this is not how it looks. The Garvey's taking on a religious procession head on. And in another episode, taking on some Roman soldiers. Oh, can't kill him, Mum. He's gorgeous. And even further out of town, the guests were brought to witness an authentic Spanish bullfight. I'm not watching. I know exactly how he feels. This is absolutely disgusting. I won't be watching when the ball comes out. Basically, it's Mateo's friend who's a bullfighter. When he walks into the room, the guy's out cold. They're expecting a show. They're all looking away because it's, you know, it's a thing, you know, we don't want to see blood, they shouldn't be doing this. And out comes... <laughs> You've got to be joking. <laughs> um, it's OK, you can look. I'm not a dog trainer. The dog clearly, although they said it was a trained dog, clearly it wasn't trained. We were sort of improvised the scene. The dog sort of, you know, I fell over, they kept it all in. And the dog sort Very of running funny. away with my shoe. I had ham stuffed in all my sleeves, down my, the front of my trousers, the back of my trousers, in my shoes. Basically, what they're trying to do is like, get the dog to basically bite to at me. Eat you. Yeah, yeah. Eat me, you know, for comedy effect. Not quite the bloodbath we were anticipating. During 10 years and 64 episodes of Benidorm, many famous faces have popped up for the odd cameo. From the Crankies to Nigel Havers, many have been happy to sacrifice a little dignity for the chance to be in the show. Even this guy appeared on the side of a mountain in one episode. And Scylla Black enjoyed the company of swingers, Donald and Jacqueline. You both seem very broad-minded. But trumping all is returning character Crystal Hennessy Vass, Joyce's boss, played with great no-nonsense gusto by Joan Collins. 
We are budget and we're proud. And the last thing that we need is some toffee-nosed social climber trying to drag us into the 21st century. Toffee-nosed social climber? I'm talking about you, Savage. Oh. New characters have continued to arrive on Benidorm. People like Chinese businessman Mr. Wu. Kenny! Oh, sorry, didn't hear you. That's OK. You were in what we call BSA, Buffet Suspended Animation. Mr. Wu's accent is... It's half of my mum's accent, and it's it, there's a bit of Jackie Chan in there. Nobody tells a joke like Mr. Wu. You better wipe from around your mouth, or you look like Buffet the Vampire. You get it? Not Buffy the Vampire. Chinese Buffet the Vampire. <laughs> And Joyce has been pursued by another more recent addition, dodgy businessman Monty. Every time we're about to meet, signs are all there. The best tie comes out of the drawer, a careful trimming of the moustache in the mirror, an extra squirt of high karate. Extra squirt of what? It's an aftershave. Oh. I've never played a part that's a puppy before, you know, that's a waggy tail and floppy ears going, how? Chips and rice tonight, Joyce. Chips and rice. <laughs> Over the last ten years, there have been births, marriages, but sadly, some deaths too. Leading lights who helped to make the show the success that it's been. Slowly but surely, that's my motto. I didn't set up five sunbed shops in the greater Manchester area overnight. It took me nearly six months. Fair play, it hurts the first time you do it, but after that, the body adapts, doesn't it, Jacqueline? Oh, yes. When Kenny Ireland, who played Donald, one half of the swinging couple, passed away, his character was given a fitting send-off. Jacqueline had taken Donald's ashes up to the cross that stands high above Benidorm with Kenneth, Troy and a leaf blower. I mean, you did that scene so beautifully. I mean, she sort of drew us all in with that beautiful speech, which was just about her and Donald. In all the years we had together, you sure have got a lot to smile about. And then who would have dreamed that the next thing to happen was her getting blown off a cliff by a I leaf love blower? That. Are you ready? And you know who would have proved of that more than anybody? Kenny Island. He he would have loved yes, his send off. He'd have he loved it. Get yeah. Sent off, I get and sent I mean, off even his end had that homage to Scotland in it. Yes. Did he get off all right? Our journey has come full circle. Ten years on from Darren's very first visit, we're back at the pool. And as filming comes to an end for another day, Darren Litton seizes the moment to say a few words. Um, obviously, we're here to celebrate ten amazing years of Benidorm. We'd like to thank our amazing cast, also our amazing production team and uh, our incredible crew and of course the viewers. When I first came here and the show was commissioned, I thought one, I get a free holiday in Spain <laughs> and two, I might meet some new friends. Well, Spain is now my home and I've found a family. And thank you for being that family.
you doing? Yeah. That's my impression of you. <laughs> I was going to say... Oh, <laughs> Johnny Vegas. <laughs> 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 you see? Oh. Don't touch me. <laughs>